Hi everybody. In this video I'm going to walk you through the process of taking this connector piece that we have here for the T9 Automoblox vehicle and we're going to connect it into the one block socket. This tends to cut a lot, cause a lot of problems for kids that are just learning how to use um, Autodesk Inventor and, and rightfully so. It seems like it should be a really straightforward uh, you know, series of flushes and mates and it just doesn't work out. Okay. Um, one thing that I would recommend before you get going at all, whenever you place a piece like this, you never know what orientation it's going to come in at. Um, feel free to use the free move and free rotate tools. So if I click here and then I click on the part, it allows me to go ahead and, and, and rotate this thing around and at least get it close. You're not going to get it 100% correct. But, you know, I can go something like this and at least get it in somewhat the same orientation that I know I'm going to need it in eventually. Okay. I recommend that you do that first. Now, the problem is, it seems like you should just go ahead, like you did with the socket to the section here, um, you should be able to flush or mate this surface here to like say the back side that I can't see right now of the connector. And then you should do the same thing for the tops and then you're going to, you know, whatever happens, you're going to get to a point where you're like, wait a second, it's not letting me do this. Why is it not letting me complete uh, the, the constraints here, okay? Um, and so really the answer is, and this I didn't even realize this until I really took a closer look, at, uh, at this piece, but if I go and I look at, say, um, this surface here of the connector, what I'm going to notice is, see, that's actually a trapezoid shape, isn't it? See how this is not a 90 degree angle between this vertical edge and this bottom edge here. It's actually greater than that. It's greater than 90 degrees. So we have an issue, and I drew up this really, really nice diagram on Microsoft Paint. We have this really, this issue of the socket, the socket itself has a 90 degree angle here and the connector does not have a 90 degree angle. And it means that you could mate, if you wanted to, the vertical surfaces here and here, or you could mate the bottom surfaces here and here, but you won't be able to mate both of them at the same time. That would be breaking rules there. They'd have to be the same angle to mate them. And so really that brings the question up of what do we do whenever we have regular surfaces that we know we need to constrain? You know, that connector really should align with the socket. It's supposed to do that. But I don't have surfaces that I can use to mate or flush. So that's what this video is about. How do I how do I go about that? And this is also something we'll use with the train and we'll use in other projects later on. Okay. So my suggestion to you is this. One easy way to do it. You'll notice over here that you have these menus, right? And you have an origin folder. Now this origin folder is for the assembly file. Not for the individual parts, but for the assembly. So it shows me the planes that I use that I'm building on. Okay. Those aren't really of any help here. But I wanted to show you that this origin folder does exist. Now contrast that with. Notice the one block socket. If I expand its menu, there is an origin folder in it as well, and probably it hasn't been expanded yet. It probably looks like this, okay? And if I go and I expand the origin menu, you'll notice that it has the individual planes that you used when you built the part to begin with. So I have a YZ plane that cuts right down the middle vertically through the piece. I'm going to right click, I'm going to make that visible. I also notice that it has an XZ plane that does the same thing horizontally. I'm going to right click, I'm going to make that visible. Okay, so looking at it from the front, here's what I have so far. Let's move this connector out of the way. I notice now you can see those two planes that cut this thing in half vertically and horizontally. That's going to be a huge help to us. Because if I go and I look at the connector piece, and so I'm going to go to the connector, I'm going to expand its menu, and I'm going to look, oh look, there's an origin plane for it too. Okay, an origin folder. And I can go grab the exact same planes, cut it in half vertically, and I can cut it in half horizontally. Now, a quick note, let's say you build these yourself and the planes aren't located there. You can always come up here and you can do a mid-plane between two planes and you can create your own plane that cuts down the middle. Very simple, okay? But what I'm gonna do then is instead of trying to put the surfaces and mate like the top of this surface to the inside of the, in of the socket, what I'm gonna do is instead I'm going to mate and flush the work planes. So I'm going to click on Constrain, and this menu will pop up, and this is just a series of mates and flushes, but instead of the surfaces, I'm going to go and I'm going to choose the, this vertical work plane right here, and notice the arrow is pointing towards me, towards the right, okay? And then I click on this work surface, and the area is also to the right, so after I do this, this is going to be a flush. The arrows are in the same direction, okay? So again, because the arrows are in the same direction, I really want a flush, okay? I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to come over here and I can see when I drag this now, it's not apparent, obvious, right? But right now it looks like it can do anything. So that's very confusing. What did I just do? But you'll notice I can no longer drag it left or right. Okay. Those work planes are constrained. Let's go back and let's do the same thing. Now, by the way, another example. 
free rotate. I'm going to take this thing. Maybe I'm going to pull it over here and get it again. I'm going to get it close, right? Okay, so it's going to be close like that. Uh-oh. This brings up an interesting thing. I accidentally went into where I'm actually editing the connector piece. See how it's highlighted here? Everything is grayed out. I don't know how I did that. That was an accident. But I'm going to click Return. Okay, now I'm back into assembly mode. I'm not editing the part anymore. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. Constrain. We'll do it with the work plane that's this direction now, the horizontal one. That arrow is clicking up. This one is up. You see how it flipped the part around? Don't panic. You're fine. You didn't do anything wrong. You just need to play around with this and say, hey, look, look what happens when I click mate or flush. You know, one way is correct, like that one. One way is incorrect. This is obviously supposed to be a flush one. I click OK. And I can see that the part can move in and out of the connector. So now all I have to do is get it the right depth. I need to get it about right there, correct? But it can no longer move up or down, left or right, by constraining the work planes. So that makes it pretty simple. Then my last step is just to go constrain, and I'm going to flush the front faces. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to grab the outer lip right here of the connector and the outer lip of the socket. And I'm done. The connector is now fully constrained. Hopefully that video makes sense and it helps you out with the connector. Constraining work planes is a great way, a fantastic way of getting things to align, especially when they're regularly shaped like this connector was.